Cool. So the, the topic for today, we're talking about how to create a pipeline of high quality leads from Facebook. So uh, like Kirk was mentioning, things on Facebook change all the time. Um, so it, it's kind of interesting. If you were to go to my YouTube channel, I'll, I'll give you uh, the link and the information for that uh, at, towards the end of today. But if you were to go look at that, um, you're going to find that a lot of the strategies that I used to teach have changed just even within the last month or two. Uh, simply because things on Facebook change very consistently. Uh, one of the things that happened on Facebook, um, in fact, towards the end of August of this year, is that uh, they implemented some changes in the targeting that made targeting for the real estate industry more difficult. Uh, so there's a special ad category for housing that you have to use now. And when you check that box that you are doing a housing ad, there are some anti-discriminatory anti things that they've put in place uh, to make sure that you're not discriminating. So um, with those changes, a lot of agents have said, well, Facebook isn't the opportunity that it once was. And uh, that is absolutely untrue. <laughs> so we're going to show you uh, how to bypass a lot of the challenges and things that people are having. And that's really the, the focal point of today's training. So here's what we're going to get into. So first of all, we're going to talk about the biggest secret about Facebook that's staring you in the face, but you probably missed it. Uh, so what I found over and over again is that uh, the people are just using the wrong strategy on Facebook and that's not why that's why they're not getting results. So we're going to spend a little time talking about that biggest secret. It's the biggest thing I could ever teach anybody who wants to consistently generate business from Facebook. Uh, second thing we're going to cover is how to build a massive pipeline of 5,000 plus contacts in Facebook. So the whole concept that I'm going to teach you today, it, it's all about building a database and maintaining that database within Facebook. But think about it. If you had a database of 5,000, 10,000, whatever that number is, if you had that many contacts in a database and you just repetitively marketed to them, think about what that would mean to your business. Well, that's exactly the strategy that I'm going to show you and, and teach you how to do today. Uh, also, I'm going to show you how to get all of this done in less than an hour of time per week. So one of the things I hear all the time from agents is that Kevin, I don't have time to market my business. Well, my response to that is if you can find an hour of time per week, I can show you how to build a massive uh, business uh, using Facebook because it doesn't need to take a lot of time. It's just the strategy that you use and we'll get into that. Uh, and then lastly, we'll finish up some, with some uh, resources and tools just to help you implement uh, what we're teaching you today. So uh, again, most of you, I think, uh, saw me last time, you know who I am, but my story is 20 plus years ago, went and got my real estate license. I was a young kid, I knew nothing. And uh, I just hoped that people were gonna do business with me. Uh, frankly, that hope strategy did not work real well. I don't recommend it. Um, and so I failed. Uh, I got out of the business. I lasted a little less than two years. And then I spent the next 15 years studying about everything I could about marketing, about lead generation, just because I wanted to, learn how to solve my own problem. And I took what I learned, I started teaching other people and their businesses were growing at a rapid rate. Um, as best as I can estimate, I've generated over 20,000 leads for my clients online um, in lots of different parts of the country and using lots of different strategies that uh, we'll show you today. Uh, one of the things people like about the way that I teach is I don't teach theory. I'm not gonna teach you what might work. I'm gonna show you what's actually working, actual screenshots, actual results, actual numbers. And uh, those are the things we're going to cover. And then uh, recently I was awarded as one of the top 25 coaches, uh, real estate coaches in the country. And uh, anyway, all this is just to show you that uh, it's not about bragging. It's just to let you know that uh, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is not my first time doing this. So with that being said, let's just jump right in. A lot of times when I talk with agents about Facebook, they, there's just certain places that they get stuck. And hopefully today's training is going to help you get in stuck in a lot of these areas. So sometimes people are getting stuck because they just struggle with the technology side of things. Um, I'll, I'll say it as politely as I can. The people who tend to get stuck on the technology are usually those that are more life experienced um, than, than the rest of us. Uh, they're usually the ones who get stuck. And so I wanna try to dumb this down and make it as simple as possible. Uh, a lot of times people say they don't have the time. Again, I'm gonna show you how to do this in less than an hour of your time per week. Uh, a lot of times people are posting lots, they create a business page and they're posting lots of stuff and they're just not seeing results. They're getting a few likes and shares and comments, but those likes and shares and comments really are not turning into business. It's not anything that's really helping their business move forward. And then sometimes people are just having the wrong strategy. 
So to all of these concerns, we're going to address all of these today, but I want to talk about the strategy first, because that's where most people struggle when it comes to generating leads off of Facebook. So in order to understand this, you have to understand this, the single biggest secret about Facebook. And it's the thing that's probably been staring you in the face and you've just overlooked it. But it's important to understand because if you don't, you won't find success on Facebook, period. There's no if, ands, or buts to this. The single biggest secret about Facebook is this. Facebook is a publicly traded company. That means I can go buy shares of Facebook stock today if I want to. And because they're a publicly traded company, that means they have shareholders and they have investors that are financially backing the company, right? So obviously as a publicly traded company, there's those shareholders and investors, they like to see profit. So it begs the question, what is Facebook's form of revenue? You have to understand that Facebook's form of revenue, 100% of their revenue comes in the form of advertising. That is how they make their profit. So the single biggest secret about Facebook is it is nothing more than a pay per view system, period. If you want more people on Facebook to see your content, Facebook is going to expect you to pay for those results in the form of an app. It really is that simple. Where most people struggle is they'll create a business page, they start posting lots of content to their page, and they just expect transactions to magically happen from that. And so the problem with that is there are algorithms and systems in place on Facebook that limit how many people see your content. The numbers are shocking when you actually see them the statistics of how many people see your post without actually paying for it, right? Without you paying for an advertisement is about two to six and a half percent. That's the range. So just to kind of put that in perspective, here's what it means. That means even if you had a business page of a thousand people who had followed your page, that's a thousand people who'd raised their hand and said, yes, I want to see your content. Even if you had that, that means the average post is only going to be seen by 20 to 65 people. So this is where a lot of people, they just have the wrong strategy with Facebook is they're posting, posting, posting to their page. And it's the same handful of people that are seeing that content. Everybody else isn't seeing it. And they wonder why they're not getting anywhere. Well, I can tell you why you're not getting anywhere. It's because people aren't seeing your content, right? And that's the single biggest secret about Facebook. Every single person that I know inside the real estate industry, as well as outside of the industry, the people who are consistently generating money, and especially at the kind of volume that I'm going to show you today, every single one of them without exception are doing it through paid ads. They are not posting lots of stuff to their page and praying that people see it. That doesn't work. In fact, that's one of the fastest ways that you can fail and think that Facebook doesn't work. Again, Facebook isn't the problem. It's the strategy that's the problem. So the strategy that I'm going to teach you today is how to leverage Facebook through paid ads. And the great news about this is even though you're paying for these results, it's extremely inexpensive. In fact, I would bet that I can show you how to do this for a lot less than anything that you're already spending to market your business. But you have to understand this principle because if you're not running paid ads on Facebook, you're just not going to get any visibility. So it doesn't matter what you're doing, frankly, if you're not running paid ads, people won't see it. And that's the single biggest secret about Facebook. So with that, here's what we're gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how to build a massive database of contacts, again, five to 10,000 people. The principle that I've seen over and over again is the person who markets to the largest database is the person who wins. So these are this database, these are people who are gonna be clicking on your stuff. They're gonna be interested in real estate. Um, and it's going to be really inexpensive to set this up. Um, and then lastly, you're not going to be dependent on Facebook for targeting anymore. So like I mentioned at the beginning of today's training, um, in late uh, August, Facebook made a lot of changes that made targeting more difficult than it's been. And if you're going to use the system that I'm going to show you today, the targeting changes that have happened won't impact you even a little bit because you're going to be completely immune to that. So the strategy that I'm going to teach you basically looks like this. So on the right hand side here, 
you're going to see all of these different lead sources. And this is what I'm going to walk you through today is how to build a database using these different lead sources from Facebook. The simple concept is, is that we use these lead sources to put these leads into the funnel. And then once these leads are in the funnel, we're going to repetitively keep dripping on these people with new content. And uh, as you see on the left hand side, that's all about creating trust and taking people through that buying process to where they become aware of you, their interest in you increases, they're at the point where they're ready to make a decision. And because you've been in front of them this whole time and building trust and expertise, they end up doing the transaction through you. So these leads that are coming through the top end up coming out of the bottom. One of the big mistakes a lot of lead generation companies make, some of my so-called competitors, is they will generate a lead for you on Facebook where they give you a name, a phone number, and an email address. And once they have turned that lead over to you, their perception is we have done our job, we gave you a lead, and now it's up to you. Let me tell you the problem that most people see with that when they're buying leads. So when you're buying leads from companies like Zillow and realtor.com and all these other sources, regardless of how they're generating the lead, frankly, it doesn't matter. It's the same principle. These are people, the leads that they generate are people that have no idea who you are, right? You don't know them and they don't know you. And so because they don't know you, conversion rates with these kind of leads are super, super low because real estate is a high trust transaction, right? People do business with people that they know, like, and trust. You've heard that before. The reason you've heard that before is because it's absolutely true. So once the lead has been generated, that's the beginning of the process. It's not the end. And that's the problem that a lot of these lead generation companies have is they generate a lead for you. These people have no idea who you are. And then their viewpoint is, hey, it's up to you. You just got to call, 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 call and try and turn the lead into something. Well, typical conversion rates with those kind of leads are about one to two percent. Because again, you have to build up trust with those people to the point where they feel comfortable doing business with you. The difference of this approach is the lead being generated and going into that funnel is not the end of the process. Frankly, it's just the beginning. Because once they're in, we're going to repetitively keep marketing to those people. And that's where the success of this happens. That's where you start getting conversion rates that are more like 50, 60, 70% because these people know who you are. You've built up that trust and expertise. And what's really awesome is not only do you have higher conversion rates, but those people contact you when they're ready, right? So I like to call this call free lead generation because it's not focused on you picking up the phone and dialing, 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 dialing like a lot of people would teach you. The strategy that I'm gonna teach is let's get the marketing running, let's get the ads rolling. And then because of this process, people are gonna call you when that time is right. So with that being said, let's just jump right in and show you how we do this. The way that we get this done in two posts, the way that we get this done in less than an hour of your time per week is in order to do what I'm going to show you, it's going to require doing two posts per week on your business page. Yep, that's it. Two posts per week. So the way that you can get this done is if you think about how long it takes you to create one post on your page, let's be crazy and say it takes you a half hour of time to put one post on your page. You're gonna do that two times and that's the marketing that you're gonna do. The biggest difference is that these, these, these two posts will have two different purposes. So one post, the purpose is to add new people into this funnel that we're gonna create. So one post is gonna be adding new leads to the funnel so that that funnel continually grows. And then the second post is gonna be content for the people in the funnel to maintain that relationship and to stay in contact with those people. So again, all it really requires is two posts per week, one to add new people and one to take care of the people in the funnel. Uh, here on this screenshot or this slide, you can see the types of content that we could post. Um, and you're gonna see lots of examples today. I'm gonna show you lots of screenshots. But this is the simple strategy of why we're able to do this in less than an hour of your time per week. So let's go through each of the lead sources. So lead source number one is marketing to your past clients, your sphere of influence to keep things very simple. Basically, we're talking about anyone that you have a relationship with. The reason why relationships are so important to this process is anytime you're marketing to people that you have an existing relationship with, conversion rates will always be higher because at some level, these people already know, like, and trust you. You've already done a lot of that work. 
And so as you consistently stay in touch with these people, it's one of the best lead sources that you can ever get um, really for your business. And uh, here's how we do that on Facebook. So um, what a lot of people don't realize is just some industry numbers on this. So these numbers come directly from the National Association of Realtors. And what they found is that 83% of people who worked with an agent said that they had a good experience and that they would be willing to refer the agent to someone else. Okay, that's the number, 83%. And, and you'd expect that. By and large, when people work with a professional, they have good experiences. Um, and yes, there's some bad experiences in there, but that's fine. For the most part, people enjoy that experience, right? But the uh, National Association of Realtors asked another question, and the question is, if this, you know, if this was your second or subsequent transaction, did you use the same agent this time as you did the previous transaction? And that number is 22%. Only 22% use the same agent again. So think about that for a second. 83% said, yes, great experience. 22% actually use the same agent again. So if they had such a great experience, why do so few people use the same agent? Well, what I found from my experience in working with tons of agents is that the stereotypical agent, once they make a sale, what they're thinking about is the next sale. And they forget about the person that they just worked with when that's one of the best sources of business. So personally, um, this is just what I notice: out of every four agents that I talk to personally, uh, only one of them is doing anything to market to their past relationships, their past clients, their SOI. And they're doing something that I would call ineffective. They're doing newsletters, recipe cards, something like that. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to be way more strategic uh, today. But the bottom line is, is if you're not marketing to these people, I would tell you, you're absolutely leaving money on the table and it's just, you're making the business a lot harder than it actually needs to be. So with that, let's just kind of go through the uh, income potential of relationship marketing. So at a simple concept, let's say that you know 200 people. So if you know 200 people, the industry average is that people are moving every seven to 10 years. So I'm gonna take 10, it's easy to do math with, plus it's conservative. So if people are moving every 10 years, then that means one tenth of your database, all the people that you know, they're gonna be moving in the next 12 months, right? So in that case, that's gonna be 20 transactions. And if you have an average gross commission of say 6,000 per transaction, basically that would be 3% on a $200,000 home. And, and I realize people are in lots of different parts of the country and there's different commission rates and sales prices, I get it. But I'm just trying to put some numbers to this. So if you're earning $6,000 gross commission on a transaction times 20 of those, that's $120,000 of business that's sitting in your contacts that uh, you're, you're missing because you're not doing anything with those people. But then it also gets better because we haven't talked about referrals from that group of people. So let's say one out of 10, that's your referral rate. So one out of every 10 people that you know that they refer you to somebody. Well, that would be another 20 transactions times 6,000. It's another 120,000. So hopefully you can see what you're missing by not marketing to this group of people. So even though a lot of what I'm gonna show you, not a lot, everything, even though everything I'm gonna show you today is about marketing on Facebook, I hope you walk away from today's training that you, make a decision that this is a really good idea for your business. Um, because if you're not marketing to this group, it makes it really, really hard to generate new business. And this is one of the best sources of business for you. So with that being said, let's talk about how we do this. The way that we do it on Facebook is, and people just don't realize that this is possible, but inside Facebook, there's a section called custom audiences. And that's the screenshot that you see right here. So I can create a custom audience based on lots of different factors. And the one that we're talking about right now is a customer list. So I can assemble a spreadsheet of all my contacts. And uh, once I have their phone numbers, their email addresses, um, I can upload that list to Facebook and then I can run ads directly to that list. So the cool part about this is um, the ads would only be going out to this group of people. So when I provide Facebook with the phone numbers and the email addresses, um, what happens is Facebook scans through all those phone numbers and email addresses, and it's looking for user accounts that have similar data, right? It has the same phone number has this, uh, or the same email address. Every time it finds a match, it pulls that person into this list. And uh, that way I can be running ads to these people. 
So once we do that, um, the next thing that pops up is it asks me what kind of customer list. We're going to use a file that doesn't include LTV. LTV is not loan to value. I know most of you think that because you're in the real estate industry, <laughs> but this is marketing. It's not mortgages. So in marketing, it's called lifetime value. Um, so it's not really applicable for what we're doing, but just to kind of open up your mind to what's possible. If you had a retail store on your spreadsheet that you're uploading to Facebook, you could actually have a column of how much money those people have spent with you over their lifetime. And Facebook, Facebook would prioritize the ads to the people who've spent the most with you. That's what the lifetime value is. Obviously for what we're doing, that's not real applicable. So we just do a file that doesn't include the LTV. Uh, we simply upload that file and then we're gonna tell Facebook what the data in the columns on the spreadsheet are. So we're gonna say this column is the last name, this column is the first name, this column is the email. And basically we do that, once we match that, it takes about two minutes to upload that list. It is very, very quick. So basically the beauty of this is once we have that list uploaded, now I can run ads directly to these people. So the question then becomes, well, once I've done that, what, are the, what do I send them? What's the content that I'm sending out? Well, there's all kinds of things, right? So I'm gonna show you some, screenso some screenshots and examples of things that my clients have done. Uh, so this is one of my clients. She was putting together a uh, market analysis for one of her clients. And uh, she just had somebody take a picture of her at the computer and just said, hey, I'm putting together a market analysis for one of my clients. Since real estate values change all the time, I thought you might want one as well. You know, if you want one, just let me know. I'm happy to prepare one for you as well. Uh, this ad, she, uh, so she put this post on her page. She spent money on an ad and sent it out to her, her customer list. And uh, she had three people respond to that ad. Two of them turned into listings that she got. Uh, by that way, by the way, the ad uh, that cost her a massive four dollars to run this particular ad. So, if you're unfamiliar with advertising on Facebook, basically the way that it works is it works on a system called impressions. And if you're unfamiliar with that terminology, one impression is just how is is how many times the ad is shown. So, one impression means that the ad was shown one time. And typically, the way that it works is you're spending about one cent per impression. So her, in her case, she had a list of about 400 people that she uploaded to Facebook. She ran an ad, that's why that ad cost her about $4. So again, it's super inexpensive. If you've been doing things like direct mail or newsletters or something like that to stay in touch with your database, um, for what you're spending for, for one direct mailing, I could show you how to market to this group of people for an entire year for the same amount because it's just insanely inexpensive. Um, here's another example. So one of my clients towards the end of the year, um, he put together this, um, it's kind of a thank you gratitude piece. Here's all the transactions that we did over the last year. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your referrals. We're looking forward to a, a great year next year, right? So put this together, send it out. And, and again, it's a super impressive piece. People see, wow, they're really busy. They're doing a lot of business. And, uh, you know, when I, it, it just helps cement that relationship in their mind that you are the real estate professional um, because they're going to see this content consistently um, through those two posts that you're going to be doing every single week. Videos are super powerful. I can't recommend videos enough. So as we talk about building this funnel where we're constantly in front of these people that have expressed some kind of interest, uh, videos are powerful because as people are in the funnel, our focus is to build trust and to demonstrate that you are the real estate expert. So when people can see your face and they hear your voice and they hear the, the knowledge and, and things that you can help people with, that is powerful, powerful, powerful to build trust and, and building your brand. And so I, I've had so many people that as they're consistently just doing a video like this, that when it's time for people, they reach out and say, hey, I've been watching your videos for months and I was just waiting for the time that, that we were gonna be ready to buy or sell, whatever the situation is. And you were our go-to person because we've seen your content. And, and the funny thing is, is they feel like they know you <laughs> even though you've never met them, but it, it's just a powerful way to build trust. So I can't recommend videos enough. Any FaceTime that you have with people just goes a long way to building trust, building your brand, building that expertise that you are the real estate professional. So uh, frankly, 
doesn't really matter a whole lot what you're sending these people, but it just allows us to consistently stay in front of them and it's extremely inexpensive. But as we're building this funnel, one of the lead sources that we want going into this funnel are your contacts. That's the first audience that we want to create. Now, the second audience that we want to create is creating an audience of people based on page engagement. Okay, based on page engagement. So, let me show you an example of what we're talking about. So this is a post that one of my clients did, and uh, this is the whole focus of it is about generating a brand new lead. So the concept is, is he's marketing a listing that he's got. So this is an existing listing. He's including some information about the home, you know, location, um, you know, what city it's in, bed, bath, square footage, all those kinds of things. But there's some key information on here that we're not putting. So we're not putting the address, we're not putting the price, we're not putting the rest of the photos. There's enough photos here that they're gonna get excited, but there's certain information that we withhold so that they have a reason to engage with you. That's the concept here. Um, you'll notice over here on the post that 8,302 people have seen this post. Okay, the reason why 8,000 people have seen this post it's not because this agent had 8,000 followers on their business page. <laughs> okay. The reason 8,000 people saw this post is because they paid for that outcome. They paid for an ad to do that. So again, where it costs about one cent per impression, that means they spent about $83 running this ad, right? That was their advertising on this. But you will notice on here with the number of comments and shares, and likes and clicks, those are the four things that Facebook measures for engagement. Clicks, likes, shares, and comments. So our call to action is if they want the rest of the information, click here to go to this link. The moment they click, now they're part of that page engagement. So in this case, where the ad is taking them is it's taking them to a landing page. So don't worry about the terminology. Landing page is just part of online marketing terminology. All of you have seen something like this at some point in your life where you click on something, it takes you to a page where it's asking you to fill out a form. That is a landing page. This is how we actually capture a lead. So where a lot of lead generation companies, what they're doing is exactly what you see here. They're advertising something, asking somebody to click on a link, and it's taking them to a page like this where we're capturing their contact information. So this is one of the prime ways of generating a lead. And then once somebody fills out that form and hits the button, it's taking them to a page that has all the property information. Okay, this is just lead generation 101. This is the basic way that it works. So what people don't realize is a lot of people see a form like this, and, and I hear comments like this all the time, they'll say, well, Kevin, I hate this kind of marketing because when I click on something and I see a form like this, I am never going to fill that out. And then I start laughing. <laughs> and the reason I start laughing is because the statistics of people that actually fill this out, statistically, a good landing page like this will convert at about 10 to 20%. Meaning of every 10 people who click and come to a page like this, statistically only one or two of those 10 are actually going to fill it out. Okay, this is just standard lead generation. This is the numbers of how it works. Of those one or two that actually fill it out, typically about 25% of the time, they're gonna be filling out bogus information because they don't want somebody contacting them. So when people are doing this, it's just a numbers game, right? So if you have bought leads from other companies and you've experienced this, uh, a lot of the leads are, are bogus. They just have bogus information and this is the reason why. So knowing this, a lot of people see this and say, well, Kevin, it doesn't work. But here's the point, you're missing what I'm talking about. If they fill it out and I get a lead, great, right? It just gives me something to follow up on and something that I can be working with. But we're building a page based on page engagement. We're building this audience of people that have engaged with your page. See, if they were interested enough to click on this link, the moment they click, they are now part of this funnel. So to a large extent, I don't really care whether they fill this form out or not. If they fill out that form, 
at some level, they're more serious than the typical person because it's kind of like a pre-qualifier, right? If they're willing to take the time to fill that out, then that's somebody that's worth my time to follow up on. But the moment they click, they are now part of this audience. And that's the whole point of this. So you can be advertising listings that you've got. Or um, a lot of times I have clients that'll put together a list, like a list of properties under a certain price point or a list of properties that are uh, like single level, something that they could market to um, potential empty nesters. So there, there's all kinds of things that you can do, but it's just getting people interested enough to click on it. And if they're interested enough to click on it, those are people that I wanna be marketing to. And so here's how we set this up in Facebook, right? So we talked about engagement, it's clicks, likes, shares, and comments. That's what we're after with this particular audience. So inside that same area, this is the custom audience section of Facebook, where as an advertiser, they give you access to these tools. So you'll notice the option here, we talked about customer list before, but for this second part of the funnel, we're gonna create a, an audience based on people that have engaged with your Facebook page. So the way that we set this up is basically, you can see that Facebook will allow me to target anyone who's engaged with the page in the last 365 days. So anyone who's clicked on a post, likes something, I wanna add those people into this funnel and repetitively just keep dripping on them. This is the way that we start building this database of thousands of contacts that makes your business really kind of recession proof. So a lot of people get worried about a recession. What happens if the market goes down? Well, in 2008, 2009, when we had that big recession, the agents that I saw that not only survived that, but actually grew their business during that time, the way that they were able to do that was because they had a database of contacts that they consistently marketed to. That's what insulated them and gave them continued uh, success during those times. So this is the second audience of people that we add into our funnel is people that have engaged with your page, clicked, liked, commented, or shared. Any of those will automatically pull these people in. So that's our second lead source. Our third one that we add in are going to be people that have responded to events. So events, um, it's a separate category on Facebook. And what I'm primarily using events for with my clients is helping them market open houses. So here's an example of uh, an open house that one of my clients did. Um, and you're seeing the stats. Again, this is the way that I teach. I like to show examples. So you'll notice here um, on the uh, stats, it said 11,200 people saw this post. Again, please understand the reason why 11,000 people saw it is they paid for that. <laughs> they ran an ad, okay? And paying for an ad is different than boosting a post. The reason why you never want to boost a post, don't, so if you're boosting posts, um, please don't ever do that again. It's kind of like taking a lighter to money. And if you like burning money, then go ahead and boost posts, but I don't recommend it. The reason why it's different is when you set up an ad, all of the targeting options become available to you. So what I'm showing you is how to create these custom audiences of people that are going into the funnel, right? If you boost a post, you can't, you, they don't allow you to use custom audiences. They pick the targeting, a lot of the targeting for you. And so that's why when people are boosting posts, they're probably not seeing results because the wrong content is going to the wrong people, right? What I'm showing you is how to create the correct content and put it in front of the eyeballs of the best people. So here where these 11,000 people have seen it. So my client, his advertising budget on this, I believe he spent about $150 in ads to promote this open house. But you'll notice uh, right here, 42 responses. That's 42 people that said, yes, we're gonna be coming. You know, think about having 42 people at your next open house, right? <laughs> it's a game changer. Is that worth 150 bucks of your, of your money to advertise and promote that? For me, it's a no brainer, right? Um, and so this is irrespective of the signs and everything else that they're doing to promote the event to drive street traffic. So that'll be successful as well. But being able to promote it like this is powerful. Because a lot of, with this, a lot of people are going to say, well, Kevin, not all 42 of those people are going to show up to the open house. And my response is, I know, I don't care, right? The, the reason why I don't care is because I can create a custom audience of people and it's based on them responding to an event. 
<laughs> so as I do that open house, whether those 42 people show up or not, they are now part of my funnel because they've clicked and, and responded to an event. So as I continually do open houses, all of these people keep getting pulled into this list. So in most cases, one of the reasons why open houses are awesome is you typically have two kinds of people that show up at open houses. Number one, it's people obviously interested in, in buying a home. They're usually actively part of that buying cycle, right? They're going through that process. So they're typically active buyers. The second type of person who comes to an open house are typically the neighbors because they wanna see what their, uh, their neighbor's house is selling for. And usually the reason they care is because they're thinking about selling and they just wanna see what's going on in the area. So those are perfect people to be in front of because these are typically active buyers and sellers in the area. But again, from a marketing perspective, I can not only use the event to drive people to the open house, but then I'm gonna capture these people once they have clicked that they're gonna, they've said that they're interested or they're going, and now those people are part of my funnel as well. So this is the third source of people that we're putting into the funnel are people that have responded that they wanna to go to an event, okay? That's the third group of people. The fourth group of people that we're using to build our database are people that have watched the videos. So I am a huge, huge advocate of video marketing because again, that FaceTime is important with people. You're in a business where that face-to-face -face contact, that one-on-one -on -one contact is really powerful. But the great thing about video is it allows you a form of leverage rather than one-to-one -one FaceTime with people. Now it's one-to-many FaceTime with people um, as you're using ads to promote what you're doing. So again, we've talked about a lot of this. Videos are powerful because they see you, know you, and begin to like you, right? Face and name recognition is super important. You're building your authority, your expertise as a real estate professional, and it just builds trust. They start to feel like they know you, they trust you, they believe you, and that is important. So with that, I'll show you some examples. Uh, one type of video that is really ex uh, exceptional for demonstrating your expertise is doing a market update video. So this is an example of that. Uh, so Sandy is a, a city here locally in Utah. And so what he's doing is he's marketing to people. Uh, hey, Sandy, here's what's going on in your neighborhood. And he's just reporting on average sales price, days on the market, number of new listings, number of sales, again, typical real estate information. Um, but through these videos that he's been doing, in fact, in the last six weeks, uh, this particular client of mine, he's done $2.2 million of, of uh, business just from the videos that he's doing. Simply because people contacted him and said, yeah, this is exactly, you know, we've seen your content. We knew we we're going to be doing something and uh, you're our number one choice because they've just seen him over and over and over again. Uh, so from these videos in the last six weeks, like I said, he picked up a $8,000 listing a $900,000 buyer and then a $500,000 listing. So uh, not bad from, from some of his videos and uh, his cost that he was spending. Um, every time he would put out these videos, he was doing about one per month and then letting the ads run all month long. Um, he was spending about 60 to $70 in ads. <laughs> so again, it's super inexpensive and uh, that's just one, one uh, possibility. Another great possibility are videos, um, and I showed you a screenshot of this one earlier, but because we're talking about videos, just to reiterate it, um, think about all of the questions that people ask you, right? Any question that someone asks you is perfect material for a video. So this is an informational video, how to sell your home for top dollar. People are always asking these questions, so he just recorded a quick video. Here's my top three tips on how to sell your home for top dollar. And so videos like this are, are super powerful. Um, one example from a client of mine, he just uh, recorded a video on how to buy a home after bankruptcy. It was a question that somebody asked him. So he sat down with his lender, had a little interview. They talked through this, asked questions. He recorded that, posted it on his page and content like that gets shared a lot because people are saying, hey, I didn't know that information. They're sharing it with other people that need that. And so informational videos are powerful. But again, it's just a fast, inexpensive way to build an audience. So here's my client. These are the videos that he's been doing every single month. And you'll notice on most of these videos, he's averaging around 1,900 views, 1,600 views per month. 
And again, he's paying for these results. But like I said, it's really inexpensive. He's spending about 60 bucks per video to promote that. So for 60 bucks, if 1900 people are watching it, that's now 1900 people that are going into his database, these people that uh, are in his funnel that he's just repetitively marketing to, right? So he's building up this massive audience of people that have already seen his face, heard his voice, know what he's all about, and it's really, really powerful. So uh, again, here's a screenshot of his ads. You can see in the column amount spent, this is what he's spending to promote those videos. So again, I told you it's gonna be really inexpensive. If, you, if you're spending any money to market your business, I'm gonna guess that what I'm showing you is a lot less expensive than what you're probably already doing, right? So that's what makes this really powerful. And again, we come back to the custom audience. The way that we set this up is we're gonna create an audience of people based on video views. And uh, the way that we can do it is there's different metrics, but the metric that I usually use is 25%. So if people have watched at least 25% of the video, that's going to pull them into this audience of people and I get to repetitively market to them. And the great thing about most of these audiences that I'm showing you how to set up is that they're dynamic in the sense that once you set them up, as people either click or watch or whatever the metric is, you don't have to update anything. People are just automatically being pulled in, right? So it takes a little bit of time to set up each one of these audiences, but once it's set up, you, you've really done the hard part. Now it's just doing your two posts per week and Facebook does the rest, right? As you're setting up ads to promote those two posts per week. So that's our fourth audience of people, are people that have viewed your video. The fifth audience of people is website traffic. <laughs> so a lot of people do not know that you can track people that have been to your website through Facebook and run ads to those people. So with this audience of people, the whole concept is your website is a great source of potential leads and potential prospects. So if people have been to your website to search for properties, they're probably part of an active buying cycle. That's why they're doing that. Or maybe they've been to your website to request a market analysis. These are people that are probably considering selling. Those are also good people to be in front of. Or maybe they just went to your website to learn more about you. Right? They went to the about you to kind of shop and do a little research to see what you're all about. But in either in any of these cases, I don't care. Those are great people that I want to be back in front of and continue marketing to. So the way that we do this is there's what's called a Facebook pixel. Now, Facebook pixel, just to keep things super simple, all it is is tracking code. So it's a piece of code that you install on your website that tracks what Facebook users have been there. So if you're familiar with cookies, they talk a lot about cookies on websites where it's just tracking you know, what you're looking at and what you're doing. The pixel is the same thing, it's just Facebook's version of cookies, that's all it is. So it's just a little piece of code that you install on your website as you're seeing in these screenshots. And then once that's done, um, you'll notice this little uh, blue icon that I've circled up at the top. It's just a little, uh, it's a little tool that I've installed on my Chrome browser. It's called the Facebook Pixel Helper. So the Facebook Pixel Helper, and all it does is it tells you if your, um, if your pixel has been installed properly on your website. So you're seeing a screenshot of my website, and uh, obviously I've got the pixel that's uh, installed on there, tracking people that are going there so that I can continue marketing to them afterwards. So there's a little bit of setup on this one, but again, the cool part about it is once it's done, um, I just simply create the audience. This audience is gonna be based on website traffic, obviously, and what it's looking at is the pixel. Once that pixel's installed, I can create this audience and anybody who goes to my website, I can now target them on Facebook with an ad. Right, super powerful. So as you're handing out business cards and you've got your, your website on there, once people pull up your website, whether they've done anything on Facebook or not, doesn't matter. The mere fact that they went to your website, now I can target them with an app, right? Powerful, powerful stuff. So that's the fifth audience of people is your website traffic. And then the, the final audience that we're gonna talk about today is I can create an audience of people based on Instagram engagement. So Instagram, some of you might be active on Instagram, some of you might not uh, take your pick, it really doesn't matter. The cool part about Facebook and Instagram using them um, simultaneously is that Facebook owns Instagram. So if you're doing anything on Instagram, you can track those people using Facebook. 
Um, with one check of a box as I'm setting up an ad, I can not only make my ad go to Facebook, I can check that box and also have it go to Instagram. Um, so if you're active on Instagram, that's another way of doing this. So a lot of times when people are posting stuff, there's gonna be all kinds of likes. Uh, you'll notice this is an example of a, a post um, from an agent and it's got 1,758 likes. Well, I can target all of these people because this is engagement on my Instagram profile. And anytime people like, comment, share, click, any of those things, I can now target those people through an ad with Facebook. So if you've been active on Instagram, um, a lot of times people say, well, Kevin, uh, you know, the, the millennials, the younger generation, they're on Instagram, they're not on Facebook. Well, first of all, that's not entirely true. But second of all, even if you wanna buy into that, um, <laughs> it doesn't matter because you're still gonna be able to target those people, right? So I, I, I laugh when people get caught up into semantics because I don't care whether they're on Facebook or Instagram, it doesn't matter, I can target them either way, right? It's not a big deal. But uh, again, the way that we set this up is exactly like uh, what you've seen, right? Um, so we're gonna create a custom audience and this audience is gonna be based on your Instagram business profile. Now, if you're doing this, your Instagram profile has to be a business profile. If you haven't labeled it that way, then you're not gonna be able to target the people that are, are doing stuff on your profile. Um, it doesn't cost anything to set up your profile as an Instagram profile. Frankly, it doesn't even change anything other than it labels it as a business profile. And then it gives you some additional, <clears throat> excuse me, statistical information and whatnot that you can use. But uh, in order for this to work, it does have to be a business profile. Uh, once you've got that set up, it works the exact same way. We're gonna target anyone who's engaged in the last 365 days. And those people are now going into this funnel that we're just gonna keep repetitively dripping on. And that's this audience of people as well. So the whole concept of everything that I wanted to teach you today is it's about building this database, right? See, the mistakes that a lot of people make with their marketing is they'll run an ad and they may get some leads from it, but that's where everything stops, right? The key to success isn't any one ad that you run. It's the consistency of multiple ads. So it's not just the ads that, of finding the people who are interested, but once they're interested, it's the continual ads that move those people down through the funnel and turn it into an actual transaction, right? So my approach is very different than most people I know. Most people, their focus of running an ad is, well, Kevin, I just wanna generate business right now. And don't get me wrong, through what I'm showing you, you will generate business right now. You will find people that are actively buying or selling. But believe it or not, as weird as it sounds, that's not my focus. My focus is I wanna build a massive database of people that I consistently stay in front of. Because if I do that, the marketing takes care of itself, right? The transactions will take care of itself. It's the consistency of being in front of them that makes all the difference. So my plea and what I would teach anybody about being successful in this space is that, again, it's not about any one ad that you run. It's the consistency of all of them where people see great results. And the beauty about this is once you've got a database of five, 10,000 people that are in your funnel because they've clicked on something or they've engaged on your page or they've been to an open house or they're one of your relationships, whatever the source is, these are powerful people, things that I wanna be in front of because they're the most likely to do business with me. See, I'm not marketing to the masses, I'm marketing to very specific audiences. And so the way that this beats the Facebook targeting is once people come into my funnel, I'm just marketing to that list of people. So I'm not reliant on targeting people. Facebook can make all the targeting changes that they want. It doesn't matter because I'm controlling the list. When you're the one who controls the list, you are not subject to the changes that Facebook makes. And that's the whole concept here. So that is how we build a pipeline of high quality leads through Facebook. The quality comes because they repetitively see your content. That's where the quality comes from. So that is how we go through this process. That's what I would recommend for anyone is just building this pipeline of audiences that as you're posting stuff, people are getting pulled into these audiences and then you're just consistently dripping on those people through the ads that you're setting up. So that is today's training on how to build a pipeline of high quality leads through Facebook. And uh, that's, uh, that's what I had to show you today. Wow.
Wow. <laughs> well, guys, I hope you took uh, as many notes as I did. And um, I'm actually starting uh, my campaign this week. I'll be shooting some videos. And I highly recommend that you partner up with someone, um, uh, invite them to this meeting next week, and we'll talk about that. So next week, let's go ahead and do that before I forget. Uh, next week, we will be talking about what, Kevin? Um, so next week, we're going to be talking about, um, I'm going to show you a marketing formula that's going to get more response and more results than anything that, you're, uh, that you've ever seen. So there is a formula and a process to marketing, and I'm going to share with you what that four-step formula is to get more results from any marketing you're doing, whether it's Facebook, print ads, I, I don't care. It works for anything. And so uh, we'll walk you through that, how to get more success with your marketing. Awesome. Look, I, I, I would uh, just recap a few things that I got out of this and I've spent tons of money marketing and, you know, I, I'm, I'm a student of, of uh, video and all of that good stuff. And uh, it, it took me a long time to really get to where I am today in, in, in the five years that I've been spending um, uh, <laughs> money trying to figure out what the right thing was to do. But guys, repetitive, repetitive, consistency and consistency. And the other thing is that, do you really want to market to people that are not interested in seeing, you know, what, what's um, uh, in real estate? And that's what we're doing right now when we're boosting. We're boosting the people who don't really care. So what I got out of this is that you want to, you take that database and you market to them and you market to them. It's your digital postcard. Yep. Imagine that. It's a dollar per po postcard every time you send it. And you better be sending it to somebody who didn't just move in their home because that's going right in the trash. Okay. So, and especially if you're sending your postcards out once a month and it's campaign time, right? Like I'm getting right now, I'm getting 20 a week of uh, the local um, um, uh, politicians running for local office. Right. But um, database is king. And if you don't have a website now or a lead generation uh, type of uh, website or a um, some type of CRM that you're using, and uh, for the people that work with me, we use KB Core, right? Uh, KB Core has a Facebook pixel um, that you can go and grab. Mine is already on there. I checked it three times just, just to make sure it was on there. <laughs> so I am right now, you guys, tracking people that are going to my website. So you know, it's not a complete loss for the dollars we've spent in the past, uh, you know, creating ads. It is because if they clicked on our website, think about the leads that you have in your CRM, okay? And for us, it's KV Core, right, for me. So basically, I'm now going to go and get and extract that information, upload that information, and start targeting those people. How many of you have had a lead in there, and when you finally decide to give them a call three weeks after they've been on your site, they go, I'm already working with somebody, but thank you, but they're still active on your site. How about when you're uploading a site, uh, 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 your database from the site, and you're staying in front of them consistently, consistently, some of those people are six months out. They'll start looking through technology and through local ads and you know magazines and of course digitally through social media start looking for a house before they even think about calling me or you so consistency and uh repetitiveness and i'll tell you right now uh instagram business profile i, I have to go back and check mine right now i think it's set up correctly that's a huge deal yep. so but anyway kevin thank you thank you thank you so much for giving back and uh, it truly is us trying to give back and uh build a strong, strong uh, relationship amongst us. And uh, we can make this as big as you guys want. Invite, invite, invite. That's what it's all about, making us better. And it's for free. It is what it's advertised, I promise you. So Kevin, if you got anything else, um, next Thursday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, invite your friends, invite your teams, your brokers, whoever you want. Uh, it's a good, safe place to be. and. Um, Man, what a great class. So thank you so much, Kevin. Hey, my pleasure. Yeah, the only thing uh, I would add is if uh, if people want uh, more. So in trainings like this, it's hard to, 
I mean, I'm doing my best in screenshots to show you how we do this, but it's not really tutorial based where you can follow click by click. If you want that, then what I would recommend, uh, let me see. Um, so what I would recommend is head over to my YouTube channel. So this is a, a screenshot of my YouTube channel. Channel name is my company. So 2Q Lead Generation Strategies with Kevin Smolin. Uh, if you go there, you're going to see tutorials on how to do the things that I'm actually showing you. So if you're curious about how to do it step by step, uh, absolutely head over to the channel, check that out. It'll show you the step by step. Absolutely. Thank you again, guys. And uh, I know I had uh, we had a big CE class uh, for my team here locally, uh, but we um, and some in other states. Some agents I work with in other states had a lot of big things going on with CE hours. So uh, expect a bigger uh, crew next week, and uh, but we're going to keep on rocking and rolling. I'm excited about it, and thank you, thank you again for all participating, and uh, happy selling. Let's finish 2019 strong. This is a perfect time, by the way, Kevin, because we're doing business plans for 2020. Maybe yeah, absolutely. If people, if people get started now, uh, the machine just starts rolling that much sooner. So yeah, absolutely. Because so when we get in that busy season, you guys, let's be present. Let's be there. And we start this today, we're already behind the eight ball, so to speak. Only 25% of the agents are doing this anyway, the right way. So let's start this thing and come January or February, we'll make it the best year ever together. Yep. Have a great week, you guys. Have a great weekend and uh, happy selling. Talk to you soon.